Darren's uh, presentation today is titled Trade Through Uncertain Times Like a Professional Trader. Now, Karen has a passion for helping retail traders develop with control, discipline, and a level of sophistication which has seen her become one of, us, uh, one of Asia's most followed trading educators. In this presentation, Karen explores how traders can apply fundamental principles, sentiment, and intermarket analysis, and how to correctly use, utilize these concepts concurrently with technical analysis to be better understand what is the signal from the noise in periods of economic uncertainty and bloom, uh, boom. For the inquisitive trader, this should be a fascinating presentation. Welcome to the stage, Karen Fu. you guys doing today good? Yeah. Give yourself a big round of applause. <laughs> for coming here on a Saturday when you could be doing so many things, like for example, shopping, watching movies, sleeping, but you're here learning. So you know, try to make this 20, 30 minutes as useful as possible for you. Is it okay? Is it okay? And along the way, can I invite you to, if you found something important, take notes, okay? So that you can remember things better. Is that okay? All right, so today I'm going to share with you the three things that you need to trade just like professional traders. So who inspired me to start investing and trading is my mom over here. Okay, this is my mom and my parents. Ever since I was born, they are already stock investors. So they kind of convinced me and inspired me to follow their footsteps. So that's how I got started. Yep, so... Over the past few years, I realized there's a significant difference between bank traders, hedge fund traders, and retail traders. Okay? So I have went to a couple of investment bank trading floors, okay? Goldman Sachs, and then I talked to those traders, investors over there. Then I realized over the years that the things that they focus on are so much different as compared to the typical retail trader. So much different. Even though we are doing the same things, we are doing the same things, but the things, the mindset, the habits that they focus on, completely different. So is it okay if I share with you how you can think just like bank traders, hedge fund traders, how to trade just like them? Is it okay? Is it okay? 
Yeah, so if you, if you if you say no, I can stop now. So whatever that I'm sharing with you today is not meant for you to trade life because you need a lot more information for you to trade life. 90% of retail traders, 90%, they focus on all these things. That is why 90% of traders, retail traders, still lose money. So what are these things? You might, you might be in the top 10%. So today's aim for you will be to go to the top 5%. Okay? If you are still in the 90%, which is okay, I used to be in that position, I make a lot of mistakes, then you work towards to the top 10%. Okay? 90% of retail traders focus on what? Technical analysis. Okay, it's not that it's not important, but retail traders focus their entire attention onto technical analysis. So if they lose money, right? Then the next thing they think about is what is a better indicator or strategy that I could use? What moving average number I should use? And also high percentage win rate. How can I get a strategy that is 90% win rate, 95% win rate? Okay. What is the holy, is there a holy grail indicator trading system? And this is very important, like when you go to social media, doesn't matter if it's TikTok, Instagram, the content that gets more views, unfortunately, are what? Get rich quick or get rich slow content. Get rich quick. But then I realized a lot of traders, they try so hard to get rich quick, but then they also blow their accounts quick. The content that gets most views, okay? How to flip your account from $100 to $5,000 in one week. I've seen one day, 30 minutes also have. Is this a good way to trade, ladies and gentlemen? Is this a good way to trade? No, okay. So the first tool you need to learn to trade just like the hedge fund traders is what kind of analysis? Sentiment analysis, okay? Sentiment analysis, huh? Just now, another speaker, I think, Spark mentioned market cycle. There's this thing called the business cycle in the economy. So the economy goes through expansion, recession, expansion, recession. What does this imply to you? This means that capital is going to flow from high-risk asset to low-risk asset then to highest asset, then to lowest asset, so on and so forth. This means that while the capital flow just like this, certain currencies are going to go up, certain markets are going to go up, certain markets are going to go down. So if you study finance, eh, you go to a finance class, professor always talk about this term called risk on environment. What kind of environment? Risk on environment. What does this mean? It means that traders want to take risk. They're optimistic. Is this during good times or bad times? During good times. So imagine you have a switch, eh? just for you to remember easily. Imagine you have a switch. You turn on the switch, people want to take risks. You turn off the switch, people don't want to take risks. So risk on environment, people are optimistic, they want to take more risks, and hence certain markets are going to go up. Example, equity, futures options, derivatives, high yield currencies. Recently, Australian Central Bank increased interest rate, US Central Bank increased interest rate, and hence which are the high yield currencies right now? If you can write this down, uh, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar. Okay, one more time. Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, and New Zealand dollar. And what kind of markets are going to go down? Safe haven markets. Safe markets. Safe currencies. Okay? When you turn off the switch, what happens? People... Want to take risks or don't want to take risks? 
don't want to take risks. So, during our risk of environment, people are pessimistic. They are risk ever. So, what kind of markets are going to go up instead? Money market funds, bonds, gold, low yield currencies. Then, what kind of market are going to go down? Risk markets, risk assets, meaning everything that's on top. Lah. Okay, follow me so far. Okay. One of the easiest way to measure sentiments, this is what hedge fund traders look at, is to look at the volatility of the S&P 500 options market, which is the volatility index. Some people call it the fear index. So there's no hard and fast rule for it. But if the number is less than 20, people are complacent. When it's in between 20 to 39, people are a little bit scared. When it's more than 40, people are panicking. So if it's more than 40, is it risk on or risk off? Risk on or off? This side say on, this side say off. So is it on or off? Off, eh? People are panicking. They don't want to take risks. Hence, it's a risk of environment. To put it simply, higher the VIX, more risk averse people are. Lower the VIX, more complacent people are. Follow me so far. What happened two years ago in March? What happened two years ago in March? Lockdown, COVID. What do you do during these two years? Slack, just stay at home. You know, it's so sad. But then, look at what VIX did. What, what VIX did. It spiked up just like in 2008 when stock market dropped. So every time when the stock market dropped, the VIX is going to go up. Okay, this uh, relationship in which we call it is inversely correlated, meaning they move in the opposite direction most of the time. Okay, let me show you why sentiment is so important. Do you remember what happened in a little bit 10 years ago? 11 or March 2011, what happened? Lucky number, one, 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 one. What happened? 11 of March 2011. Of course, most people don't know that because this occurred in Japan, Fukushima earthquake. So by right, if there's an earthquake in your country, is the economy going to go down or go up? Common sense tells us that the economy is going to go down. Agree with me? But instead it went up. The currency went up instead. Yes, the economy is affected, but the currency, Japanese yen, went up instead. Why is that? Due to sentiment issues. Due to sentiment. You can see what happened to VIX. The purple line over there is VIX spiked. So when yen went up, because yen is in a counter currency, dollar yen, so when the moment, 11 March over here, the earthquake happened, the currency dropped massively. You see that? Why is that? Because yen is a safe haven currency. When people are scared, they are going to buy safe currencies. You know the framework I showed you just now? Okay, that's why dollar yen went down. If you rely on technical analysis, you probably would draw a symmetrical triangle over there, somewhere over there before that. And then you'll be surprised all the time. How come this currency dropped without any reason? It's testing a very strong support. How come it dropped? Okay, so just don't rely on technical analysis alone. A very recent incident, what is this? Ukraine war. When did it happen? February. What happened to the stock market? You already know, it dropped. But then the weird thing is, weird thing is, 
a risk market went up. What market is that? Stock market is a risk market. Huh? Another risk market went up. Stock market dropped during Ukraine war, but then another risk market went up. What is that market? It caused inflation the whole entire world. What is that market? Energy. Okay? All prices went up massively. CRB index went up massively. So what's the point of this? What's the point of this? If you look at World War I, World War II, go back all the way. Even though every single war is different, agree with me? But then the markets tend to react in the same way. It's just a matter of will it go down more or will it go up more? But if it goes down, go up, it reacts more or less the same way. So one very important point I need you to write down is study past history. Okay? A lot of retail traders, yes, it's important to study indicators, but one super important thing is to study past history, back tests. Because for the past wars, World War I, World War II, stock market tank, but, but commodity prices went up. If you studied the past war, you would know the same thing is going to happen right now. Okay? Why did all prices, commodity prices, go up during war? Why? First reason. First reason, the war in itself requires the use of oil commodities, a lot of raw materials, so increase in demand. Second reason, war results in a destruction of factories that produces raw materials disrupts the supply chain. So, increase, decrease in supply. Decrease in supply and increase in demand leads to massive increase in price of oil and commodities. Please study past history. It is very important. You can so-called predict what's gonna happen next if you study past history, okay? Second tool, intermarket analysis. What kind of analysis? What kind of analysis? Intermarket analysis. Doesn't matter if you're trading forex, stock market, commodities, or bonds, you need to look at other markets to compare. Okay? If you're a forex trader, you got to look at stock market, commodities market, bond market. Because if you ask any hedge fund trader or trading floor traders, so what do you think the stock market is going to do tomorrow? They're going to answer more or less the same thing. So based on the bond yields, based on the bond market, the stock market is going to go so and so forth. It's always based on another market, then it's going to cause this market to move. So there are many ways you can measure the relationship between different markets. Visual interpretation, correlation indicator. So because today I only have 20 minutes, I'll just focus on visual correlation indicator. Okay? Very simple one for you. So let's compare forex market and stock market. If you pair a high yield currency with a low yield currency, you have Aussie Yen. You would have a currency pair that would follow the stock market movement. Okay? If you look at bottom over here, this purple, purple shade over here, when the shade is above the zero line, horizontal line, it tells you that most of the time, these two markets, they move in the same direction. Okay? When it's below the zero line, it means that the market moves, these two markets moves in opposite or same direction. Opposite direction. Okay, follow me so far. I don't know if you can see that point, that middle point over here. When the stock market tanked, okay, from here, 
the stock market tanked. The blue line, the stock market, purple line is Aussie yen. When the stock market tanked, before that, slightly before that, what happened? Remember when I said you can use other markets as a clue for the markets that you're trading. Before the stock market tanked, what happened? Aussie yen went down first. So if you know this relationship, can that currency become a leading indicator for your stock market trades or investments? Yeah? Instead of relying on technical analysis, a lagging indicator, other markets are going to give you leading indicator signals. Way too many retail traders don't look at this enough. So let's compare Forex commodities, okay? So there's this term called commodity currencies. Commodity currencies. What are commodity currencies? They are currencies in which their country exports commodities. Example, huh? Australia, the major export that they have, one of their main exports is gold. And hence, they are going to move in the same direction with gold most of the time. If you put in a correlation indicator, it's going to be purple shade on top, mostly. Okay, so if you're trading commodity currencies, please look at commodity prices. What are commodity currencies? Example, Australian dollar, example, Canadian dollar, and one more, New Zealand dollar. Okay, very good. Very important point, huh? this one. Sentiment and intermarket analysis can only be used to generate a trade idea and be used as a confirmation to your overall analysis. It's not meant for you to execute a trade. What do I mean by this? Let's say if VIX today is above 40, we cannot be like, okay, let me just immediately sell or the end. Instead, we should think, it, think in terms of, okay, VIX today is above 40. Let me see if I can find a good entry point to sell in Aussian using technical analysis. You see a difference? Okay. Final tool, what kind of analysis? What kind of analysis? Fundamental analysis. I oh, only have three minutes left. I need to go fast, okay? Elections, again, study past history, elections. More or less, regardless of Republican win, Democrat win, it's going to move in about the same way, especially stock market. A week or a month, slightly before the election happens, the stock market is gonna tank, VIX is going to spike. Then right after the election, regardless of it's a Republican win, Democrat win, stock market is going to recover. Study all the past elections, the same thing happened. This is how you should approach your analysis. If you ask any hedge fund traders, they follow this framework. Okay, so I want you to follow this framework today if you haven't already. The first analysis that I talked about just now is, what kind of analysis? Sentiment analysis. Then the second analysis, inter-market analysis. So the first step to generate an idea, a trade idea, okay, not to enter, not to enter, but to generate an idea. Sentiment, inter-market analysis. Okay. Then right after that, you go down to the fundamentals, to the country level. Just now you're looking at what's happening in the whole world. Now you're looking at the country's level. Look at the country's state of economic conditions, political conditions, societal conditions. Then where do you put your stop loss, TP target, where do you enter? You apply technical analysis. Is that enough? Is that enough? Or do you still need more things? Is that enough? Yes or no? 
Yes, ah. So just stop here. Some more, what is that? What else do you need? Share with me, what else do you need? Risk management, very good. Some more? Two more things. Two more things. What's that? If wrong, never mind. Two more things. Have more indicators. Huh? What's that? Risk management, huh? then what else? Mindset, Mindset your yeah. trading, psychology. Then one more thing, one more thing. Method discipline, okay, that's under training psychology. One more thing. Money management, very good, that's under kind of in risk management. One more thing. Who invited you here actually? The broker. Okay, have a reliable broker, trading psychology, then risk management plus trading journal, trading plan, proven trading plan. Okay, so to so-called summarize, professional traders focus on focus on risk management. They are super good risk managers. They might not have the best trading strategy, but they are super good risk management, rich risk managers. That is why they make money in the long term. Do you know who is Paul Tudor Jones? Paul Tudor Jones. He's a billionaire hedge fund manager, okay? He also trades Forex. And here's the thing, his win rate, his win rate is only how much? Can you guess how much? His win rate, huh? His win rate is only between 40 to 55%. And why does he make money? Because his risk to reward ratio is very, very good. Okay? Because I can tell there are a lot of traders who have 95% win rate, 90% win rate, and they still lose money. I made this mistake in my first year. I have 90% win rate. Wow, I think I'm the best. But after that, that one trade is enough to blow my whole entire account. Like have nine straight wins, right? 20 straight wins, wow, like I feel I'm the best, but then that 21st trade that I lose a lot, blow my whole entire account. Okay, so don't make this mistake. Instead of focusing on returns, returns, profits, ROI, hedge fund traders focus on what kind of returns? What kind of returns? Risk adjusted returns okay and please huh? please 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 i made this mistake last time i think that forex i thought that forex is a get rich quick scheme but it's not those hedge fund traders professional traders who last in the long term on day one they tell themselves you know what i'm gonna do this until i retire whereas for the typical retail trader you know what i want to buy lambo next month Maybe six months later, since the trading guru bought a Lambo, okay? I think I also can buy. So, eh? I only have two minutes left, okay? If you want more trading tips, I'm not here to sell you a course or book or anything, okay? If you want more trading tips, you can go to my YouTube channel and then go through the videos, okay? How many of you have, have watched my videos? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, like at least got people. I expect nobody. Okay. So the, how many things? One, two, three. The three things that I taught you today, that I taught you today, in detail, the lessons are over here. I know the profile pic a bit cringy, but it's all Photoshop, okay? This why look different. Okay, these four videos, these four videos, to go into detail, okay? I spent a lot of weeks on this video, so make the most out of it. Then after you watch these four videos, then you can go through this playlist. It's called Free Trading and Investing Courses. Then you go through all the videos one by one, okay? You can so scan here if you want to. 
but can easily Google lah, okay? Easily Google on YouTube. So if you got any questions, you can email my team and also follow me on social media. Make sure to follow the right accounts, okay? Because there are a lot of people pre pretending to be me, then like, eh, ask you for money and all that. I don't do that, okay? Okay, follow the right accounts. And with that, I hope that this talk is beneficial for you. And I wish that may the pips be with you. And with that, thank you so much.